Hi, I'm back. So today we're going to continue to play with the Vivid Polypore. Um, in the last video I did some tests on some repurposed 8x8 or 6 6x6 six six canvases um, just to see if I could even come close to Fiona's work. I mean, Fiona Art, you've got to get, check her out on YouTube. She's amazing at her flower dips, her balloon dips, but her florals are gorgeous. Um, if you practice, you too can do it because it is fairly easy, but it's not easy. You really got to have a, a light touch to it. But um, in the last video, you guys saw me mix up the colors, but until people get what polypore is, I'm going to mix another color here before we start. Um, Vivid polypore was designed to give our acrylic pouring artist uh, the perfect polymer blend to mix their primary element art pigments in and create a paint. Because it's the perfect consistency, you don't need to add water. If you don't need to add water, then you don't need pouring medium. You don't really need to do anything. It's the perfect consistency for fluid art, for pouring. It even makes a beautiful brush paint. It feels kind of glazy, but um, some of the acrylic base is similar to our enamels. That way it can go on glass and stuff. But I hope you really enjoy this and uh, we'll make this quick. We're going to do another flower dip on an 8x8 average purpose and if this goes well, we'll do a brand new 10x10 and hopefully I don't blow it. So, I've uh, that bottle's heavy. I mean, it's a 32 ounce bottle. We are going to be coming out with a little 8 ounce bottle and some um, half ounce uh, primary elements, what, what, basically what we're going to be doing. I know I didn't mean to do this. Okay, so what's coming soon, literally next week, we'll be putting on the website a starter set. So if you've never actually played with paint pouring or you want to just get a little taste of the poly pour, we're going to be offering this in an 8-ounce bottle. We will have 16 half-ounce primary elements. These are a pretty luscious amount of product. It's not like those little shaker jars. It's 50% more than what we used to sell in the shaker jar and at the same price because this packaging is a lot less expensive than that shaker with that little sifter on top. There'll be 12 colors, uh, a couple metals, and a couple of the blingets so you can have some fun and mix your own colors. Meanwhile, let's uh, mix something up here for my flower dip. And I'm going to go with lighter colors. I don't have much left, and this is a little, my own personal container of it. But Mediterranean Blue, I have Blue Bio already mixed up from the last video, but the Mediterranean Blue is a lighter value. It's, a, it's got a blue mica in it, so it's going to leave a beautiful blue sparkle. Uh, this is about an ounce. Now I'm using these little, this is also going to be going in the set. Um, I'm using a taster spoon. What you used to go to Baskin Robbins for and get a little taste of, of uh, ice cream. I guess there's some paint on this one. That's not a brand new one. Okay. It's very flat. And so up to the level of the flatness, it holds an eighth of a teaspoon. I still use it today and I've been working with this stuff for years because it keeps you honest in your mind of how much you're using. It helps you keep track of how much you're using. It's too easy to uh, take a popsicle stick, grab a bunch, and you're using way more product than you need to. So um, the polypore mixes beautifully. You, want to, you do want to stir still, slowly. You need to allow the water-soluble color to dissolve. This is not mica powder. Primary Elements is not just a cosmetic grade mica powder. We've been making this in two, in, since 2003, way before all these beautiful cosmetic grades that are out there now that the resin workers are working with. And they were designed for the soap making industry. I know I keep stirring this just because it feels good to stir. It's probably done, okay? Didn't take much. Let's get a close-up on this. And 
there's my Mediterranean blue. It's all ready to use in my flower dip and I figured this would be a really pretty color on that black. Golden Diamond is a color we use in resin and for water soluble products. It's got no color in it at all. It is a ground metal and mica mix. So where the Mango Mamba is an actual primer element. This just happens to be my personal sample and it's a warm yellow. So uh, on the canvas, it would be nice to have kind of a goldy warm yellow on that black. Not quite an ounce in there. I'm gonna make this kind of concentrated because yellow doesn't necessarily show up on black, but because this has got ground metal and iron oxide mica in it, which iron oxide mica, this is where gold that sits on the surface benefits you when you're working with black because it will sit on the surface and give you coverage. And other applications, you know, you probably noticed that your gold seems to take over. But on working on a black canvas, um, you want something that's going to sit on the surface. Yeah, this is repurposed too. I sprayed over this. I forget what was on here, but I, this is black spray paint that's on here. It's a gold, but it's going to be a really warm gold. There's some color to it. Okay, so let's uh, have a try. Now, the first trials, I tried just putting polypore in the center as lubrication, like when you're doing a, a clear lubrication on a resin canvas, and I had the edges just painted with white. Another one I've done with, because um, I was testing my whites. I tested Rust-Oleum, I trusted Artist Law, and I trusted our own white enamel, Siam White. We do have it in the Vivid line. It's a very nice white. It's actually what I'm using for my dotting white in my flowers. Now, I have plenty of other colors already mixed up from last night's video, but those extra three I just made are going to go in today's piece because of the black. So I'm going to start... I've taken some of the Vivid Polypore, and this is going to dry clear, okay? My canvas is already painted black, right? I don't think that popsicle stick's going to work nearly as well as my silicone brush. And don't press down on the canvas. That's one thing about this uh, dip technique. You're already going to have the paint pool in the center. So I watched Fiona over and over and over again. And again, shout out one more time to Fiona Art. You've got to go check out her YouTube channel. She is the total inspiration for this. Um, I'm hoping that I sent her, I, I am sending her some colors, full disclosure, because I think our colors lend themselves to this type of application. They're uh, transparent to semi translucent to opaque depending upon how saturated they are and so this type of dip technique where the paint is sitting on the surface beautiful and it's not getting buried inside of a bunch of black and white is a perfect application for the primer element so I know it looks a little strange I promise you this is going to dry completely crystal clear but I want it lubricated and by the way, this is the first time me trying this on black. So we're all going to try this together. So for the color just I just made, I'm out of my little bottle. So what I also have is I have these little restaurant bottles I have that have these tiny little tips on them. I used them last night. Um, they may form a little goober on the top just because you're working with a pretty strong acrylic. But... The inside is beautiful and luscious. There is no silicone in any of these, okay? And I'll do my best to call them out as I'm using them, but since I don't have any more of those bottles, we're going to use pipettes. And this tip's just a little too tiny, so I'm just going to trim off just the edge so it still has a tiny tip, okay? 
I'm doing them to three of these because those are the three colors that I mixed. So when you see me apply these, you know where this is coming from. Okay, so this is that first color that I mixed. Um, maybe it was, was it the first color? This is that Mediterranean blue. And it, the pipette draws up enough. Oops, did not mean to put that big blob there. Now all my little beginning blobs need to be bigger. Wasn't planning that. Be careful with this. With a bottle, you have more care. I am going to get more of those, but I figured 11 colors plus a white was good to start with. That also means my greens for the outside. Okay, so I've been now that I'm fussing with this too much. actually do some of the work that the paper towel is supposed to do. This is some of it an experiment, but I'm going to form these. In a leaf sort of shape, why not? Or a petal shape. My little pipe, it'll let me do it. I'm really just gently moving the paint around. I don't know why I'm doing this, but my gut just said try it. So I'm going to try this, okay? And so that's that first color down. Then I'll go dark because I'm going to make sure that the dark shows up. This is my boysenberry. I'm going to have to put this up on the website. I ran out of Snapdragon last night here, so I pulled out boysenberry. So, incidentally, we have over 216 colors made, but we reduced our line to about 63, 64 colors on the website to keep a little bit of control of the inventory because we still hand fill these to order. Once we get that 60 stock built up where they're in bins, we're going to create a special order page. You guys are going to know that it has to be hand filled and it's going to take sometimes there it takes a couple days to have someone go in and hand fill all those additional colors that you want. Okay, so that's the, that was the boysenberry. I'm going to get some white incorporated in this right away because we remember we have no white on here. So I'm dropping, this is the Siam white in the Vivid Enamel. Surprised I haven't had to clean the goobers up from last night. I'm going to have to find some little pin or tool to do that. Okay. Okay, well let's go with Royal Orchid. This is a warm violet. Here's a color called Guatemalan Green. Now instead of going in the inside, I am literally going to go around my ring. Pull it up here in the top of my petal. Gently going around my ring, top of the petal. This tiny little bottle, I can do that. There's the top of the petal in my little ring. I just want to get a little bit of color down there.
we'll put a little bit more white on top of that royal orchid. I'm drawing it up just slightly with those other colors. You gotta have a little contrast. It can't just be all the shimmer paint. Okay, now we've got Blue Bayou. color called Stargazer. Love, love, love this color. It's a blue-violet, but it has an interference green to it. Okay. And now, this other color, that iris petal that we mixed. Got my little pipette. if I'm getting too heavy-handed on my color here. But I still need some kind of contrast. Now I know we're going to get contrast in the center. Let's do that now. Because this is a transparent yellow, I know this is a risk, I'm going to put a little bit of white here and just kind of spread it out lightly. It's not a big puddle. I'm just going to spread it out lightly. I want a little bit of background for my sunburst to sit on because our colors are, some of our colors are transparent. So we're going to get some yellow here. It's hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot jasmine pink. I think I'm gonna Okay. I know it's crazy I'm putting black in, but this is just a drop of artist loft black. This is my swipe mix that I usually swipe with. So just pouring medium water, artist loft black, no silicone. There's no silicone in any of these. Oh. Well, this is that gold that's just got a little bit more something to it. Accent a little bit of the gold because again we're working on a black background. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Hope I didn't mess it up. Okay, now for the greens. Yes, folks, we actually have some greens too. Because of the transparency, putting a couple drops of white on each corner. Then we'll put the, uh, the kiwi green is going to do fine on that black. It's the olivine. I'm putting some olive down and I want that olive to sit close to that white. This is kiwi. Not to confuse you guys. I'll put a couple extra drops here and there. Here's the olive. Because it's a dark color and we're working on a dark surface, 
First bottle I found with a goober on it. Of course. Oop. All I did was just take the end of my bamboo skewer and just pop the little top. That's all I did. So I'm putting either the olive oil inside the kiwi and then also on top of the white so it has a place to sit. And then I've got one more green, um, Irish Mist. It's sort of in the middle. It's more of a Kelly green. The luck of the Irish. Okay, let's see what happens. All I am is gently tapping this. So it pushes it out. Not really hurrying it at all. Touching each section gently and moving my way up. At least that's the best I can interpret of what Fiona's doing. So I'm trying to apply what apply what I've seen her do. The moisture does help a little bit. You don't want it soaking wet. It just is moist enough to where it just kind of clings to the surface of the paint. Okay, now the center is kind of tricky because there's a lot of paint there. We'll see. I'm getting nervous now. <laughs> I decided this wasn't voiceover uh, worthy. We would look at this together in real time. You know, I'm noticing the paint needs to go out a little bit in some of these. And if I can fill a little bit of pocket of paint in there, I can keep moving it out. Because that's what I'm finding is I want to blow them out a little bit further after they puddle in the center. So if I can gently push the colors out this way safely while I have control of it, at least this is my rationale. I'm not sure if it's if it's right or wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up one side and the other, meet them in the middle and hold on to them. Grab the other side. And as I'm lifting up, I'm just going to give it one little tiny twist. Oh, yeah. I'm digging that. Woo! So hold on. we got to do the Fiona thing. Fiona, and that's so perfect. I don't know, Fiona. Would I be doing the Fiona thing? The Fiona thing is she takes her finger and just gives it a thing in the middle. So it brings up these little veins, but these little veins are happening. So instead of putting my finger in the middle of it, I'm gonna encourage it. Just kind of encourage that pattern to 
move how it wants to. Oh my God, I'm absolutely in love with this. Ah! That bubble that burst is now giving me a really interesting little cell there. I suppose I could smooth that out and make it feel like it's part of the pattern. Oh wow, little cells are popping up. Okay, I'm just going to, and there's no silicone, okay guys? It's just the paint. I am loving this because this is going to dry clear and all that color on top. Sorry, that's just my torch. Oh my gosh, look at this. That is stunning. I hate to say it. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. I just can't believe how pretty it turned out. I've been practicing the, th got the concept of the white, of the color, what I'm going to do. And I do like that little bit of yellow I put through there. I was kind of hoping that little golden yellow pop that I put between kind of the petals would help. Not sure if it takes away from the design or not, but it does certainly make the paint pop out on this black. Holy moly, I hope it dries like this. Okay, I'm... Goodness, 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 goodness. Let's see if I can get another close-up, a real pretty close-up for y'all. It's forming those little thingies in the center, which I love. Oh, they look like little pestles. Look at those little, they look like little uh, cells. Now this is the paint creating texture where the polypore, that clear polypore pulled off and you see this pattern? That's gonna be completely clear. You could actually come back later on and rub a little gold or something around the edges if you wanted to, because it might dry with a little bit of tack, you never know. I love that white with the color put down. I'm definitely doing that again. This is a winner. I like how it's making the green pop. So that was a really good move. Got my, I've got the flashlight on my phone. You see how that paint is sparkling like crazy? That's the primary elements. And why you need that little bit of white back there to back it. And you can go up here and take a look at how pretty those greens are, those greens and golds. This is going to be so beautiful when it dries. And then when you resin over the top of it, just some clear resin. That's all you got to do. You don't have to be a resin worker to do that. Just a little bit of clear resin. Um, and you'll be able to resin pretty fast because this has no silicone in it. So you don't have to worry about pitting or anything. Here's a little bit more of the other end. Okay, guys. I'm real excited. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye! So here's a close-up wet with my cell phone. Look how sparkly. I love how that Mediterranean blue and the stargazer, all those blues and purples kind of melded. You can see the green violet, the blue violet. That olivine is beautiful. I am thrilled how that little bit of white with the green on top really helped that white pop. That's that Siam white, our vivid enamel Siam white. I'm digging the center here. That is so pretty. That little bit of black really made a difference. And those veins of gold may or may not have needed it, but I like the idea of putting something lighter in there that's going to create some definition over the black. Because remember, this is black canvas and trying to put color right on top. Really shimmery color. 
So here's my little piece in the entirety.